Some QRP CW operation from my holiday location using one of the most effective yet simplest vertical antennas you can imagine. I shot this video a few days ago. I went to my holiday location for an overnight stay. I wasn't very well equipped with the camera equipment. I hadn't taken my main camera, I'd just taken a backup camera. Uh, the microphone really wasn't suitable for outside work because I picked up some wind noise and apologised for a bit of wind noise on the recording. But the challenge was, could I work across the Atlantic just using 5 watts? Things were against me. I only had a 20 metre antenna. Okay, 20 metres is good for DX, but we were in the middle of the summer. It was the longest day, and conditions certainly weren't very good on 20 metres. I listened around and there were some European stations, and I worked a few European stations. But it would have been nice to try and get across the Atlantic. Could I actually do it with just 5 watts and with conditions and the time of the year against me? Let me show you how it worked out. Welcome once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel. I'm talking about a very simple portable aerial that I've been using recently, which works extremely well and is very easy to make. It's basically vertical with a single radial. Now I'll just sketch it on a piece of paper here, you can see what I mean. The radial needs to be basically horizontal, it can be at a bit of an angle, but that radial needs to be um, above ground by around about one and a half to two meters to avoid coupling to ground. You want that radial to be part of the antenna system, part of the resonator uh, of the antenna system. And uh, well, uh, let me let me give you some more details. It's days like this when it's good good fun to mess about with antennas. Actually, it can be too warm. I'm in Suffolk at the moment and. Uh, this is the antenna I've been experimenting with. It's basically a 20 meter vertical, a 40 megahertz vertical. That means to say it's about 16 and a half foot tall. It's supported on this fiberglass mast. And I've got a single radial, quarter wave radial, which is around about nearly two meters above the ground and just sits across the top of the decking rail here. The whole kit is very simple, as you can see. And I attached the mast using a couple of elasticated uh, straps, which uh, you can get from Halfords or various other places. Decking, of course, is a very convenient way of mounting the aerial because wood is uh, an insulator. And uh, strapping a vertical of some sort to the decking is a natural way of erecting the antenna, I'm fairly close to power lines, quite close to power lines, but strangely enough, there is almost zero noise. Uh, I got a bit more noise when I had a horizontal antenna, but I think because this is a vertical and the power lines are horizontal, uh, there's a 90 degree shift. So maybe that's the reason why it's quiet. Anyway, the good news is it's quiet, which uh, pleases me no end. I'll attach the element and the ground plane using this little BNC adapter which is designed to take uh, wire, bare wire, or insulated wire. The positive red one goes to the inner conductor of the coax connected to it and the other wire goes to the outer sheath. And I've used an adapter here because I've got a PL259 going into it but anyway it's quite easy to make and you can get these adapters uh, on the in internet quite cheaply. Now, talking about radials, there's a very interesting um, blog that Steve Telanius Lowe put up um, quite a few years ago now, but it's very interesting. If you're thinking, you're thinking about radials and uh, how effective they are, etc., take a look at Steve's uh, blog. I'll put a link to it below this video. It's probably one of the best um, videos, uh, sorry, the best blogs that I've seen on radials, and it's very, very practical. Steve used to be uh, an editor for the RSGB uh, many years ago, and then he went to 
um, Kota Kinabalu. Um, sadly, I, I, I went out to Kota Kinabalu, but not realising he was there, so we didn't actually meet. We could have met up and we know that we were both in Kota Kinabalu. Um, but then uh, he moved subsequently to the Caribbean. He's not, now on a Caribbean island. But he still contributes to uh, Practical Wireless and I think Radcom occasionally. So um, anyway, take a look at uh, his, uh, his blog. It's, it's quite interesting reading. I'm feeding this antenna with the ubiquitous RG58, which I use it, or use that coax quite a lot. It's ideal for QRP. I've got a length of, um, it's probably about eight meters long. And I take that from the base of the antenna through a window into the Zigu X6100. And that normally runs five watts. I do sometimes, um, beef it up with an external supply, run about 8 or 9 watts. I find on CW, I hope this wind is not causing too much problem with the mic, um, I find on CW that um, 8 watts is about right. If you run 10 watts on the 6100 it starts to get fairly warm and the difference between 8 and 10 watts is neither here nor there but 8 watts does make a difference to the heating. So um, if you're going to use the Seagoo 6100 with external supply I'll keep it on CW, I'll keep it down to about eight watts. Remember, CW um, is more effective than SSB because CW is always pumping out full power. When it sends a, di a dot or a dash, it's full power. On SSB, you're listening basically to the average power. The peak power is there, but it's the average power that carries the information. So CW has got something like about a 3 dB gain over SSB and, of course, it also has a significant gain in terms of you listening to it. A very, very weak SSB signal. You might be able to detect the speech there, but you can't copy it. A very weak CW signal, provided you can hear it, you can probably extract most of the information you need. So CW, the QRP CW, is certainly much more effective than QRP SSB. I'm we'll trying to sort of... Uh, convert you to CW because you can't convert people to CW really they've got to come to it from their own from their own sort of perspective they, they want must, must you, you must want to learn CW in order to operate CW and talking of CW um, I'll show you the little key that uh, I've been using for CW um, which is a key I only, I only found on our warehouse shelf about two weeks ago and it's a nice little key it's basically designed for hand holding rather than on the desk um, because there's not much weight to it but you can use it hand held and also it folds away it takes up very little room anyway I'll just show you it here the key is made by ghd a small japanese company you see the paddle will fold away nicely so it really doesn't take up much room when you're traveling and it's got a nice feel to it it's um not overly loose, but it's uh, it's it's comfortable to use. I I don't find any problems with it at all. Nicely engineered little key, and you can and I tend to hand hold it when I'm sending. It's easier to hand hold than put on the surface because there's no weight to it at all in terms of stability. But it's a nice key. Well, I've only been using this antenna for about two weeks now, but it works extremely well. I was quite surprised what I can work on it. It's mono band, single band. I mean, there are ways of making it multi band, but um, for the moment, it's single band. It's very easy to erect and it gives very good uh, results. Now, the feed impedance is probably around about 35 ohm something like that no higher so there is a bit of a mismatch but that doesn't really matter because if you check the VSWR on the transceiver as I did with the Zigu uh, X6100 without the ATU you get a pretty good uh, VSWR and it's fairly broad banded one interesting thing about um, this sort of vertical is that you can adjust the impedance if you were to shorten the antenna slightly by two or three percent and increase the radial by a similar amount, two or three percent, you'd actually, you'd actually shift the feed point slightly. And if you shift a feed point from the centre either way, you actually have the effect of raising the impedance. You've got a vertical. The vertical is the same height as the radial. You've got it resonated on, I don't know, 14.2 megahertz. 
and you've got a VSWR you know, at 1.5, 1.7, something like that. Well, feed impedance at the centre is probably around about 25 to 30 ohms. It's certainly low impedance. Now, you can raise that impedance by simply adjusting the antenna. You can either make the vertical radiator a bit longer or a bit shorter, and you then adjust the, uh, radi the, the radial in the opposite direction. So if you make the vertical a bit shorter, you make the radial a bit longer. And if you make uh, it vice versa, then it has the same effect. What it actually happens is you're shifting the, you're shifting the feed point from the center slightly to one side. And if you shift the feed point from the center slightly to one side, you actually improve the matching. The impedance rises from, say, 30 ohms to around about 50 or 60 ohms, something like that, which gives you a much better uh, match. So if you fancy fiddling about with it, the feed point position by doing that, it's great fun. But um, uh, for the moment, I haven't bothered. And really and truly, it's psychological. Uh, a 1 to 1, to one or 1.2 or 1.3 to 1 as against 1.7 to 1 is psychologically better. In terms of performance, it doesn't make a heap of difference. So, something to play around with if you feel like it is not too hot like it is today. Terribly hot today. So this was the setup. I had the Zigu X6100 running 5 watts. And the first thing I did was put out a CQ test call just to see what reverse beacon would report back to me on my signal strengths around the world. The results were quite encouraging, there were some reasonable signal strengths there, albeit around Europe. But look at the bottom one, Finland, 24 dB, so that's not bad for 5 watts. The antenna was running slightly west of north-south, and the radial was running, therefore, slightly west of north. Now, the pattern of radiation on this report seems to suggest that the radial is given a little bit of gain in that direction, but I'm not quite convinced because I think it was quest questioned that the band was open to Europe <laughs> and so there was no stations in North Africa reporting. I listened around the band and I suddenly heard NY2PO calling CQ. It wasn't overly strong, it was about five and six, five and seven, but there was no, no other American stations on, just Europeans. So I gave him a call, but of course he didn't come back because uh, several European stations uh, called him. He's working stations fairly quick succession. So I thought, right, plan B, as soon as he's finished with a station, I would quickly send the code QRP, which might get his attention. So as soon as he'd finished with a, a European station, I quickly sent QRP, then D, G3, O, J, V, stroke P, and it worked. He called QRZ. He struggled a bit to get my call, but eventually got my call, and we had a QSO. It was Pat in New York, you might have guessed that from his call sign. But I was very pleased I got across the Atlantic with just five watts in the middle of the day, in the middle of the summer, when conditions on the HF bands are not particularly good. And you don't normally hear American stations coming through. It was around about midday, actually. So I was very pleased. So many thanks for watching uh, this video and also your support on this channel. It's much appreciated. Don't forget we've got a, a good range of stock. Well, I say a good range. We've got a very wide range of stock. Check it on our website. If you've got any queries, just... Uh, you lift up the phone and give us a call and uh, we'll be happy to help you. So whether it's a transceiver or whether it's an area or it's insulators or plugs or SWR meter, all those sort of things, whatever it is, check it out on our website. And if you've got any queries, you're not quite sure, then give our guys a ring and they'll be more than happy to help you. Remember, we've been in amateur radio an awful long time. We like to help people because we know that is good customer satisfaction. There we are. In the meantime, enjoy your ham radio, you take care, and as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.